Income Tax 2022-2023, create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number four. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Here's our example form 1040. We've been populating with Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to it, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules, IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We've been looking up the form 1040 and constructing an Excel worksheet that we can use to double check the data input with and better understand a formula format for the income tax forms. So we've been entering the information starting with the income statement basically reflected on the first page, which is income and then the deductions. And then we get our taxable income, kind of like the bottom line of the income statement. And then on page number two, we're gonna have the tax calculation, other taxes, credits, and payments. So that's where we are in our formula down here. So the top half we've been uh, looking at, which is gonna be the income line. And then we had the adjustments to income and that gives us our adjusted gross income. And then we have the greater of the itemized or standard deductions. And then we're not gonna dive into the qualified business income. That's if you had a, a business of Schedule C, we'll talk more about that later. And that gets us basically to our taxable income. So this one actually kind of makes intuitive sense just from an accounting standpoint, we're basically doing an income statement, although the format of the income statement is quite complex because it's quite weird because it's quite manipulated from the tax code, not just including those deductions you would expect to be there in a normal income tax system, which would be one or deductions which were used in order to generate the income. That's what you would expect to be kind of like the natural deductions, but we have all these other kind of weird standard deductions and above the line deductions for whatever other incentive or tax purposes that they wanted to put those in place for. So, but in any case, that's kind of normal. We can reconstruct that. The tax calculation, as we saw, is complex because it's gonna be based on the tax tables. So we'll actually pull that from the tax return oftentimes. And then the bottom half, you, you would think we're almost there once we get to the tax calculation, but no, because there could be a significant amount of credits which we have to break out between refundable credits and non-refundable credits. And then we have other taxes that might be in place, such as self-employment tax, for example, that we have to deal with. And uh, we've got the uh, payments and refundable credits that we have to deal with. So let's go back up and let's kind of make it a, a simplified scenario again. And then we're gonna basically make our sub-schedules with relation to the, to the other credits and other taxes to have these numbers pulling in from somewhere and then we'll build on to them uh, in future presentations as we do our practice problems. Let's go back to just basically a, a basic scenario on the top half of the income statement to start with. So we've got income and so I'm gonna get rid of this adjustment to income here. So let's get rid of this one. I put that over here on the adjustments. I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna put a little border on this Let's put a border here and then I'm going to remove that. So now we're at 100,000. Let's get rid of the Schedule A stuff too. So I'm going to go to the Schedule A and we have that up here. So the taxes, I'm going to remove these for now. Bring that back to zero. So nothing's on the Schedule A. If I pull that into the first page, now we're taking the 12,950, which is the standard deduction. So if I go back on over 12,950, that gets us to the 87050. So if I go, we're at the 87050 and then the tax, I'm going to depend on the software to calculate on page two would then be the 14774. Let's start there, uh, 14774. And then we've got the other credits. 
So let's just add another tab. I'm gonna add another tab. Now it gets a little bit messy with the other credits because you might have multiple different forms. So if you're constructing your tabs in Excel, you might make like another tab for each form or you might just make a general tab that's gonna be com comprising most of these other type kind of credits over here. Also note it gets complex with the credits because we have the non-refundable credits and the refundable credits and we might have uh, credits, many credits that are refundable, meaning they can take the tax liability below zero. So you're actually getting like a refund or benefit program, even though you didn't owe and you didn't pay any tax. Uh, many credits that have that component have a non-refundable and refundable component to them, which com makes the calculation more complex because then we got to think about, well, okay, if, if that brings the tax down to zero, then it's not eating into the to the refundable component and, and different tax credits are structured a little bit differently. So that muddies up the water as well with our calculations. So let's just take a look at one over here. So a common credit would be the child tax credit. So let's just add that one. Now note again, that's on schedule 8812. So let's just add that. To do that, I'm gonna add a dependent. And so I'm gonna say, let's add a dependent and just see what that looks like. So I'll put a, a Sam Anderson, Sam Anderson, and we'll say this is relation, I'm going to say, so there it is, that should do it. So if I go back on over, page one then, so now I have single. Now note that if if we have a dependent, that might move the filing status up to a head of household, but I'm not really focused on the filing status right now, I'm, I'm really just focused on uh, the the dependent status. Let's actually move that up. Let's just play with that. We'll, we'll say, okay, that means that we're going to go from single possibly to head of household. And let's go back on over. So there we have that. And so let's just see what that does to the page one. So now we've got Sam uh, Anderson. It's going to be uh, have a credit. We'll talk more about the credit later, but just to get our, fo our formula down, we still have the 100,000. And then we've had the standard deduction is now at the 19.4. And that's because we're going to say that it was boosted up to head of household. So we'll talk more about this, the, those later, but head of household, boom. And so that gets us then to the 80,600, 80,600 page two then has the 11,855 as the tax. So let's put that down here. 11,865 was it? 11,855, 11,855. Okay. And then on the credit side of things, we've got the 2000 for the child uh, credit. So you can see kind of a worksheet on how the calculation uh, would be if there's a phase out and whatnot. So you have a choice then on your side, do I wanna add it as another schedule like the form uh, 8812? Here's your kind of calculation for it, but it's a fairly standard kind of credit. So the other option is that I, I add it as just basically a general credit worksheet in my Excel worksheet? And then do I want to kind of recalculate the phase outs in my Excel worksheet or just basically populate it at, you know, 2000 for the general number and then adjust it uh, as needed, basically depending on the software. So I'm going to do it kind of generic here. I'm going to go back on over and say, this is going to be another tab and I'm going to pull this all the way to the right and I'm just going to double click on it and just call it other credits. And so I'm just going to make a generic one. I'm not, I'm not calling it the name of the form because I might put more than one kind of credit here. I'm holding control zooming in and I'm going to put the title up top. I'll just say other credits. I'm going to, I'm going to select the triangle for the whole thing, right click and format this as we do every time, go to currency, bracketed numbers, no dollar sign. I'll get rid of the decimals. Okay home tab, font group, make it bold. And there we have it. Let's make this black and white as the header. So I'll go up top and say this needs to be, let's make it black and white for the header. And then I'm just gonna include the, the child tax credits. Let's just say here, child tax credit, credit. Now you could, you know, base this, like I could calculate the number of dependents 
and then try to figure out what the credit would be and, and work in phase outs. I could make a quite complex worksheet. We might dive into that a little bit more when we get into the credits, or I can just say, hey, look, I can, I'm just gonna realize that there is a credit and I'm gonna be able to start to assume that's gonna happen if there is a dependent. And so I can imagine what's gonna happen. And then I know it's gonna be like 2000 unless they go over an age limit, the general rules. And if there's a phase out, I might be, be then dependent on the tax return to some degree to help calculate the phase out and then go in and try to understand it to double check that it's doing what I think should be done properly and so that I can explain the phase out to a client, right? What is actually happening. So I'm just gonna do it that. I'm gonna make this uh, blue for our data input. So if you don't have that blue, it's down here. Standard, I'm gonna make it that blue and then border it. And then I'm just gonna say total other credits. Now I might put more credits in here, but now I've got my worksheet where I'm just gonna have my first thought process of where I'm gonna add the credits, which is gonna tie into my first line item in here. So this, this credit line, I'm gonna say this equals other credits, that number. This number might change as I add other types of credits, but now I can just see how everything's being fed in to this one form. So if I go back on over, there's the 2000 that brings the tax to the 9855. So if I go back on over, we could say, okay, the 9855, that looks correct. Okay. So now then let's pull this over here. So then we've got these other, other taxes. So one of the big other taxes will be like a self-employment uh, tax. So I'm going to make a change that's going to have a big effect on a lot of different things. I'll put in some income into a business income, a schedule C, and that'll shake things up a bit. So we'll go over here and I'm going to go, let's go income. And I'm going to say we have a schedule C income and I'm just going to make up a schedule C income amount. See if I can just dump in, uh, let's put, let's put 60,000 here. And then down here, I'll just put uh, 20,000 as an expense, just to see the calculation on a Schedule C. So if I go over to the Schedule C, which we'll dive into later, now, uh, obviously I didn't add everything to it, but I'm just kind of showing what's gonna be populated here, an income statement on the Schedule C, 60,000 minus the 20,000 gets us to the 40,000. Now look at everything that happens once I do that. That 40,000 is gonna be pulling in to the first page of the Form 1040, uh, but, uh, here it is and it pulls into schedule one as well which we'll take a look at shortly but just note that that 40,000 is is not um the the gross income it's the net income so remember when we look at our formula here I just want to point out that we've got income which includes a bunch of different kinds of income and then we've got the above the line deductions or adjustments to income and then the itemized or other standard deductions uh, but this income line, if I'm pulling in some items, there might already be expenses kind of kind of applied to the schedule. In other words, like when I pull in the net income, in essence, from a Schedule C, I already got all the deductions, which are the business deductions on the Schedule C. The same would be true for like a rental property. Uh, similar kind of thing for, for when I sell stuff for capital gains like stocks because the cost of the stock is kind of like a deduction. You can think of it kind of like, so, so, so that's something I just want to kind of point out here. So I'm going to add another form over here and let's add it to next to the income line. So I'll make another schedule for a schedule C to add that. So I'm going to add another uh, form. I'm going to pull it next to the income for the 1040, double click on it. I'm going to call it SCHC and I'm going to scroll in. I'm going to highlight the whole thing and say right click and format the cells and I'm going to say it's currency bracketed no dollar signs no decimals okay and then this will basically be kind of like our income statement let me just check did I put sometimes I, I didn't I put this over here on other credits on line seven I'm going to remove the cells above it or the rows above it because I do that sometimes when I zoom in too fast so I'm going to put my cursor on one to six, right click and just delete. And that should pull it up to the top. 
Let's do that over here. This time I'll start on the top and I'll just make a mock income statement. Now, if you were to populate your business schedule C income, we'll talk about it later. How would you get that data? You can get it from like a QuickBooks or something like that. You might not repopulate the whole income statement on your worksheet, uh, but possibly just summarize it here on the worksheet. So I'll just do a quick kind of summary of it. So I'm gonna say we have income. I'm gonna make this whole thing bold. And then we've got expenses, expenses. So the income line I said was 60,000. We might have, and then the expenses, ex, and then, oh man, I'm over here on column D, really? I'm gonna delete these columns. What in the world? Expenses. And then I think I just put something in advertising. Advertising. Okay. So let's pull the income out here. Actually, I'll pull the income out to the outside. Actually, let's put it in there and then I'll have total income in, in case I have multiple income line items. It's probably only a couple. I'll say total income and then I'll sum that up in the outer column like so. So now I've got, this is my data input right here. I'll make that blue and then it'll sum up in the outside and then my expenses will be down here. I just got advertising and then I'll have total expenses, total expenses. And this will be the sum of this. And then I'll say that was 20,000. And we'll get more into this, an income statement, a schedule C later, but just to put something in here so we can pull this in. And this will be net income, which is the taxable line item which is the 60,000 minus the 20,000. So that 40,000 then is pulling in to the first page in this income line. So now I've got two cells here, two uh, sheets that should be pulling into that one income line. So I'm gonna double click on this one, go to the end of it, say plus, and then point to this schedule C and the net income. And I'm gonna pull that in. So now I've got 140 in my first line, which ties out to this number. And now I've got the adjustments to income. So let's take a look at some of the other things that are affected by this whole Schedule C, which we'll dive into later. So I'll just do a quick overview of it because it, it adds a lot of complexity to things. So, and, and I'm, I'm not wanna dive into it a lot of detail. I just kind of wanna mirror what the system has put in place right now. So the 40,000 uh, uh, is here and that pulled into the income line item. It's also pulled into schedule one right there and it sums up on the schedule one here and then it pulls into the first page of the form 1040 as we saw right there, which is included in the total income. So we also have the self-employment, the, the tax. So this is self-employment tax similar to payroll tax, but for the business where you have to pay the employee and employer portion in essence of the self-employment tax. So that comes out in essence, if we calculate this whole thing out, I, I, will, I will get into the calculations more, but it comes out to 5,652. That goes to the second page of the form 1040. That's kind of where our focus was, which is right here, right there. So that's our added tax. So let's first do that. And then we'll look at the next consequence. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, this other taxes, I'm gonna make another line for that. Now, again, I, I could make multiple lines. I could call it like a schedule SE self-employment tax, or, or I can just call it generically, you know, other taxes and possibly put other things in there other than just self-employment. So I'm going to make a fairly generic one, just call it other taxes for now. I'm just going to say plus pull this all the way to the right and right there, double click on it. I'm going to call it other taxes and then i'm gonna select i'm gonna scroll in and then i'm on a1 this time and i'm gonna say we have other tax let's say other taxes i'm gonna select the whole sheet right click format the cell currency bracketed no dollar sign no decimals okay bolden the, the whole thing make this black and white home tab font Groot, black and white 
and then I'll put the taxes. Now, I could, I could pull this calculation in from the Schedule C, for example, and calculate the, the taxes. I can recalculate basically this whole, uh, this whole kind of calculation in Excel. But I don't want to get too detailed into it right now. We might do that later and, and see the pros and cons of that exercise. But right now, I just want to recognize that if I have a Schedule C, what's it going to do? This helps me to, to just see what the, the software is doing, applying the tax code. I'm just going to call this self-employment, uh, employment tax. I'll put that in this outer column over here because I'm not going to do any sub calculation to it. And it comes out to two. It comes out to the uh, to the five six five two. That's Social Security and Medicare. We'll talk more about it later. Five six five two and five six five two. And so then the total I'm going to say down here, the total total other tax. I'm going to put in the outer column equals the sum of this. And that's the only thing we have in there right now because that's the big one. I'll make this I'll make this blue and bordered, bordered and blue. And so there we have that. Now this I'm going to pull this into our first page of the 1040, which is going to go right here, other taxes. So other taxes instead of having zero, I'm going to think that pulls in from this other taxes page which only has the self-employment tax, I might add to it later. So there is that. So that pulls in and that should mirror what we have now on page two right there. So that makes sense. But that 5,652, we also get to deduct half of it on page, on, on page one in essence, as part of, of an adjustment to income, which is right here. Now, why do you get to do that? It's kind of complex because it's basically payroll taxes, social security and Medicare, which they're trying to mirror what happens on a sole proprietorship to what happens on like a corporation. But they're trying to treat a sole proprietorship on the schedule C as if like you're an employee of your own sole proprietorship. In other words, they want to take your 40,000 income here and charge you both the employer and employee portion of Social Security uh, and Medicare because on the corporate side, uh, if you had an employee, so they're treating you like an employee of your own business. Like, so if you were on the corporate side of things, then then the, the, the they withhold the employee half of Social Security and Medicare and then they have to pay their half of Social Security and Medicare, but they get a deduction for their half of Social Security and Medicare. So we should get a deduction if we're self-employed and they're treating us as an employee of ourselves and whatnot. But we can't put the deduction on the Schedule C because we use the Schedule C to calculate the tax and we end up with a circle of reference. So they have to put it on the Schedule 1. See, this is all, we'll get more into this later, but that's just a quick uh, recap of it. So that means that on page 2 of Schedule 1, there's that 2826. Uh, 286. Two, Two six two eight two six, so that's going to be right here. So we talked about it being right uh, adjustments, adjustments uh, to income here, and so that pulled in from this tab where we had an IRA. Now I'm going to say half of self-employment tax. Well, let's get the terminology correct here. So they call it they call it uh, deductible part of self-employment. So. Let's say part of basically half. Let's say half. Half self employment tax. So this one, I could say this is going to equal then the full tax, which is on other taxes, that number, self employment tax divided by two. So it should be that 2826, 2826. And that number then is, I'm going to make this blue and bordered should pull into page one of the 1040 and there we have it okay so let's see what we've got now we've got the 140,000. does this make sense we've got 140 that's right we've got the 28626 the 2826 for the 137 174 and then we have the standard deduction 194 194 gets us to the taxable income 11777 
effect. But now we've got this other, uh, the, the, the qualified business income deduction. Now I'm not going to dive into this in detail right now. This is kind of a, a weird, when they changed the law a few years ago, they, they kind of plugged the, a hole in the, in the law that they were trying to do some stuff. I won't get into it now, but I'm just going to depend on the software for now. We might dive into this more when we get into uh, the schedule C stuff. Obviously it's a huge component. Uh, if you have a business schedule C, but I'm, I don't want to get into detail on it now. 7435. I'm just going to plug it in right here. 7435. Obviously, we would want to have a good understanding of that number. It's material. It's significant. Uh, we'll dive into it on the schedule C a bit more. And then that gets us to the 26835 and the, and the 110339. So the 110. 339 there we have that i'm going to depend on the software to calculate the tax on page 2 18817 so let's say okay this is going to be now 18817 18817 okay and then we've got the 2000 from other from the child credit boom and then we've got the uh 5652 from the self employment so 5652, boom, that gets us a total tax of the 22469, 22469. Then down below, you've got your payments and withholdings. So let's just add a withholding now so we could see what that looks like. So I'm gonna say, all right, let's say that, that on my W-2, I withheld, I withheld for federal taxes, whatever, 15,000. And then we'll pull that over. That shows up on page two here. So then if I pull that in my formula, I've got my payments and refundable credits. We'll get into the refundable credits later. Let's just add the payments. So I'm going to, I'm going to go and add another tab, pull this all the way to the right. And I'm going to say, let's scroll in, go up to the top. So I'm on the a one, select the whole sheet, right click format the cells. And I'm going to make this currency bracketed numbers, no dollar sign, no decimals, and then make it boldened. And this is going to be payments. So this is going to be, let's double click down here. Let's say payments and credits should be like refundable credits, refundable, refundable credits. So I'll say payments and re refundable credits that's what we had on line one right so payments and refundable credits yes so i'm going to make this larger let's make it black and white up top and boom boom and let's say the first category is going to be withholdings withholdings so this is going to be shown on like w2 let's make it w2 withholdings w2 withholdings and so I'll make this, I'll make this black and white. And then I might leave a few spaces down below because I might have more than one W-2. So I'll leave a couple spaces. And then I put this first W-2, I'm going to say for whatever was 15,000. And so I'll, I'll sum this up down below. Total W-2 withholding withholding summing out to the side right and there we have it now we also have might have withholdings for for other things like like retired uh, individuals will have uh withholdings on distributions possibly and you could also have payments if you had the schedule c businesses for example and you didn't have enough of the withholdings to pay for that uh you might have withholdings there we'll get into that later but for now, I'm just gonna I'm gonna say that this is what we have, and this is gonna be the total, the total uh, payments, payments, and let's say let's make it capital payments and ref, refund uh, refundable credits, and I'll put this to the right there equals the sum. All we have is that 15 for now. We'll add to it when we get to more complex problems later. But the bottom line is this tab is going to pull into the first tab 
which is here, this is going to be equal to the payments and the refundable credits. So that's, that's the general idea. And then if I go back on over, now we've got uh, the payments and that comes out to the uh, seven, seven, six, seven, eight. Now it, act, it added another 209 for, for like penalties. So let's say penalties and interest was the, the software's adding another 209, 209. So after, after penalties and interest, we're gonna say this is gonna be this plus this. Gets us to the seven, seven, six. So the seven, seven, six, seven, eight. Yeah, seven, six, seven, eight. So that's the general, that's the general layout. So we just kind of constructed it. We'll use this worksheet and expand on it as we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a review and say, does it all spell check it? And I'll do spell checks for each of these. Spell check, spell check. Let's do some spell checkies and Look at this. I'm a spelling master. I feel wish I I wish I was this good when I was doing those spelling bees back in grade school, man. I would medical. Uh oh. Mortgage. I hated those spelling bees. I hate them. I don't want to stand up there and spell whatever. You spell it. You spell it. I'm not this ain't. I've spell check on a computer now. All right, so there we go. Okay, so then, so then notice that we don't have really any data input on the first page here, except for a couple items. This one's pulling from a table down below. Uh, this one is coming f is is basically a data input right now, but it would only be there if we had like a schedule C, and we'll talk more about it uh, later. They kind of shove that one in. A few a few years ago and like we talked about and then we've got the actual tax calculation which we're going to depend on the software to help us to calculate so the general strategy we're using these other worksheets to pull into the first page of the 1040 in a similar fashion as the actual 1040 uses other schedules to pull in for the income line item and then the adjustments which are going to uh, decrease it the above the line to get us to that agi number then we're taking the larger of the itemized or standard deduction the standard deductions being pulled from this table down below so that we can we're still kind of populating it but it's basically pulled in from the information down below taking the larger of the two which is a formula the max of the two the qualified business income we're pulling from the software for now and that gets us to our taxable income with a formula the average tax we're not actually entering but rather pulling this data in which is the tax which is calculated using the progressive tax structure from the software to back into the average tax and then we've got our other credits which are now being pulled from uh, our other uh, tables over here we only have one other credit right now, the child tax credit. We'll add more later, but we'll just add them to that sheet so they'll pull in over here. And then we got the other taxes. The only other one we have at this point being the self-employment tax, but we might add more there later. That gets us to the total tax after the credits. Notice it's a little confusing to call it, you know, tax after we've applied, you know, credits to it and we have the tax up there up top so we have the difference between credits and taxes and then we could have other credits even down here but all we're doing is comparing it this time to the payments payments we usually make with withholdings or payments that would be coming from uh from like schedule c payments for example to get us to the tax due or refund and then if we had to add a little bit added item down here for the penalties and interest that are applied by the software then we can add a, a little added calculation to uh, to add the penalties and interest so that we can tie in exactly. So that's the general structure and that's the general layout. And you can see hopefully how this kind of this kind of layout can help you to, to better structure in your mind what's going on, better be able to visualize it and then double check your numbers by entering the same data into two separate items, one in your Excel worksheet, one into 
the actual tax formula and the Excel worksheet can help you to kind of explain it uh, in your mind, double check some calculations and be able to uh, explain what's happening, happening to yourself and to a client if necessary.